Hello there, thank you for joining us here at Tulu Talks. We're here to discuss Leo Marx's essay, Does Improved Technology Actually Mean Progress? I'm your host, Moist von Lipwig, and I have four wonderful guests with here, uh, here with me today to discuss this essay. Our first guest is Professor William Burge, Professor Emeritus of Clever Writing at UC Beachside. Pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. Our second is Cameron Moore, Thomas Jefferson Chair of Enlightening History at Chesapeake University at Krabby Bay. How's it going, Moist? Uh, our third guest is Mr. Dr. Professor Aidan Thayer, Henry David Thoreau Fellow of Contrarianism at Duchess University, South Carolina. Good evening. And our final guest is Professor David Zhang, Chair of Choo Choo Studies at the University of Florida, Pelican Cubano. What's up? <laughs> God. <laughs> no, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. So my first question is for Professor Burge. In Marx's essay, why does he repeat his question, does improved technology mean progress, both in his title and in his first sentence? I think that's a good question, uh, mainly because Marx takes a very interesting approach in how he structured the essay. Instead of leading in his introductory paragraph with his argument, what he does is he frames it uh, more so as an investigation of history, and then comes through with his argument at the very end. So by asking the question twice, he almost brings the, the reader along for the ride, and lets you kind of answer the question alongside him like while you're reading the essay. Uh, and it requires you to think critically as well. And so what he does here is he presents uh, the history sort of as uh, facts and that it is a, a very glossed over version of history and it, it does uh, imply that there's much more uh, clear delineation between errors than there actually is, where, whereas in reality there's more of a smooth transition from time to time and there's a lot of contradictions in a given uh, historical period. But that it still does serve to make a solid argument for him, and it helps to uh, in, to bring in the reader and to make you uh, feel more a part of a discussion, where as opposed to just having an argument levied against you. Thank you, um, Professor Moore. Uh, what does how does Marx describe the Enlightenment idea of progress? So Marx uses two men to illustrate the Enlightenment idea of progress. These men are Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. And what he really wants to point out is that unlike the technocrats of today who see technology as the definition of progress, these guys saw technological or technology as a tool for promoting social and political liberation, which I think drives home the point that Marx is trying to portray that these guys knew the answer of progress towards what? They were trying to achieve social and political liberation and that we seem to have lost our way. And one more thing I wanted to comment on is uh, something a little ironic in the piece, is that both of these guys are thought of as revolutionists, when actually they, and I think it's something a lot of people are thinking of when they're reading this paper, and they owned slaves, they were for an agrarian society, but I think as hard as that is to swallow sometimes, it is important to note that they are perfect for Marx's argument, and they really drive home the contrast between the view of technological progress in the 1700s and what it's become. Thank you, Professor Moore. That was a very enlightening answer. Um, Thanks, most. Professor Zhang, um, Marx dedicates some time to discussing the technocratic idea of progress. What is the technocratic idea of progress according to Marx? Right. So uh, to bring to bring his point to light, uh, Marx uh, Marx brings up the uh, sort of like an anti hero to the sort of Jeffersonian and ben Benjamin and Franklin, Franklin ideal of progress, which is political and social liberation, and he brings up Webster. Webster is, or was, a famed orator of, uh, of the 1850s, and he, he very much supported and pretty much um, advertised for technology. Uh, and essentially, what, he, uh, what Marx thinks technocrats uh, think is that Oh, um, uh, hey, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, I have time to talk. Uh, do some stupid conference. Oh my God. I don't know why I'm here right now. Uh. As I was saying, uh, basically what Marx, basically what Marx was trying to tell us is that technocrats saw technology as progress because technology provided all the things that they wanted. You know, wealth, power, control over the population. Uh, I mean, to them. Technology really is progress, and I think he, he thinks that that sort of viewpoint has been has been trans, uh, transplanted into like our into our society today. 
Thank you for that answer. Um, my final question, or rather my second to final question, is for Mr. Dr. Professor Thayer. Um, in his argument about adversary culture, Marx brings up a particular philosopher, Thomas Carlyle. What did Thomas Carlyle have to say about the concept of machinery? Well, Moist, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Thomas Carlyle is actually um, sort of on the fence, I guess you could say. He recognized that um, during the time he was doing his works uh, that we were entering the machine age and that machines were going to start to become far more prevalent in society. Um, and he actually thought about this in two ways. One, in the literal sense that machines would soon um, replace or uh, take many functions that we had not seen before as well as sort of a mechanical way of thinking, um, a utilitarian way of thinking, where machines could be used uh, to in, uh, uh, create sort of uh, progress in society. Um, however, he did not believe that machines and technological progress were actual indicators of societal progress. He thought that they could be um, used in such a fashion, but were not necessary uh, for societal progress. Thank you for that answer. My final question is to all of our panelists. Um, to answer Marx's question, does improved technology mean progress? We'll start with Professor Birch. Uh, line? Okay, um, yeah, so I thought it was a relatively convincing argument. Uh, and I think that it's a, a very good STS work. And, and as I said, I think that by drawing in the audience and asking it as a question, it actually does require you to think a bit more. Um, and, and it requires you to come to your own conclusion, and I think he does a good job at getting you and pushing you towards his conclusion and making it seem like it's your own. Uh, it's probably the best STS work I've ever read, and he's probably the best STS author I've ever read as well. Thanks, Professor. Um, I would say technology does mean progress if we have a reasonable answer to that question that Marx keeps asking, and it's progress towards what? If we have a useful goal that's going to improve society that can answer that question, then absolutely, technology is progress. Yeah, um, I would have to agree with uh, Professor Moore on this one. It um, reminds me sort of a Carlyle's of sort of of Carlyle's approach of thinking that it can be progress, but might not necessarily be progress. And I think the question progress towards what hits the nail on the head in terms of that critical uh, position. Yeah, I disagree entirely with all these people. I, I think technology in its entirety generally means progress. I mean, if you look at the past hundred years, the human population has exploded and the human, um, and the human uh, sort of quality of life has improved drastically. I mean, like a hundred years ago, people were still dying from childbirth. Now that's like, that's something that should never happen again, at least in more technologically advanced countries. And so I would, I would wholly say that technology is progress, but only because it causes, uh, only because it causes a net good. Thank you for those answers. And thank you for being here with us to discuss Leo Marx's essay. It's been very kind of you. And thank you to you, our studio audience, who has been here to watch this episode of Tulu Talks. I'm your host, Moise Von Lipwick. Have a wonderful evening. studies at the University of Florida, Pelican Cubano. How do you do? Okay. Thank you for joining us. Hope you Wait, can you do the last one? <laughs> <laughs> and David Zhang, chair of Choo Choo Studies at the University of Florida. <laughs> can we start over? It's the Choo Choo name. The you can't say Choo Choo. Uh, hey, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, I have time to talk. Uh, stu some stupid conference. Like, uh, that's a lot here right now. Uh, so yeah, cool. So I'll talk to you later. So All right, see ya. Oh, All right. All right, cool. Okay. That was very inappropriate, Professor Zhang. I think I, I would thank you not to do that again, but continue with your answer. Okay, well, whatever, dude. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I. <laughs>